Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I want to talk to you guys about using functions in Python. Now, a function is basically just a collection of code which performs a specific task. So I can take a bunch of lines of code that are basically doing one thing. I can put them inside of a function, and then when I wanted to do that task or do that one thing that the function was doing, I can just call the function. And so functions really help you to organize your code a lot better. They allow you to kind of break up your code into different, you know, little chunks that are doing different things. And they're really just awesome. So functions are like a very core concept when we're talking about programming in Python. So I'm going to show you guys how to create an awesome function today. Let's say for the purposes of this tutorial, we want to create a function that says hi to the user. So the one task that our function performs is basically just saying hi to uh, whoever is writing the program. So over here, if I want to write a function, the first thing I have to use is a keyword in Python. It's called def, so D-E-F. And basically when Python sees this keyword, it's going to say, oh, okay, this person wants to use a function. And so after we type out def, we need to give this function a name. So just like when we are creating variables, we give them descriptive names. We also want to do the same thing with functions. So if I'm creating a function, I can just give it a specific name, which basically says like what it's doing. So we're going to create a function that says hi. So I'm just going to call this function say hi, just like that. And once we type out the name of the function, and so also I could type out say hi with no underscore or I could type out say hi with an underscore. Both are considered like good practices in Python. A lot of times if you just have a simple like two word function like this, you don't need to put an underscore, but we could put an underscore there um, if we wanted. After we type out the name of the function, I'm just going to type an open and close parentheses and then I'm going to type a colon. And basically what this is doing is it's saying to Python like, all right, all the code that comes after this line is going to be inside of our function. And in order to write code that's going to end up being inside the function, we actually have to indent it. So over here, you'll notice that when I clicked enter, my text editor automatically indented the text. So it's automatically like using this indent here. And that's kind of like one of the rules in Python is like the code that goes inside of this function needs to be indented. So if I was to write some code like out here, this is no longer going to be considered inside the function. So you can see as I type out code and obviously this isn't real code, but as I type text over here, that's indented, this little like marker over here is basically saying like, oh yeah, that's inside the function. But then when I write code over here, that is like not at the same indentation level as this stuff, it's no longer considering it inside the function. So. That's just a little thing. Any code inside this function needs to be indented. All right, so our function is just going to say hi to the user. So I'm just going to have it print out some text. It's going to say, hello, user. So this is a very simple function. Obviously, we just have one line of code. And inside of a function, you could have you know as many lines of code as you want. But for our purposes, we only need one line in order to perform our function. So now all we have to do is call this function. So if I want to execute the code inside of this function, I have to do something called calling it. So if I was to just run my program as it is right now, I'm just going to run it. You'll see that nothing happens over here, right? Even though this function is printing out hello user, when I run the program, it's not doing it. And that's because the code inside of a function isn't going to get executed by default the code inside of a function is only going to get executed when we specify that we want to execute it. And in order to do that, we're going to have to do something called calling the function. So in order to call the function, you basically just type out the function's name and those open and close parentheses. So I'm just going to type out say hi and open and close parentheses. And now when we ref when we run this program again, you'll see that it prints out hello user. So we're executing the code inside of the function. And I want to show you guys just one more thing here, uh, just talking to you guys about how these functions actually work. So up here, I'm going to print top and then down here, I'm going to print bottom. So I want to show you guys the flow of these functions inside the program. So when I run this program, 
you'll see we print out top, hello user, and then bottom. So essentially what's happening is when Python goes through and executes this program, it goes over here to this first line, it says, okay, we want to print out the word top, and then it goes down here and it says, okay, we wanna execute the say hi function. So Python actually jumps up and it goes over to this say hi function and it's gonna execute all of the code inside of this function. So it's gonna go through, execute all of this code, and then once it's done executing all of the code in the function, it's gonna jump back down here and it's gonna move on to the next line, which is bottom. So that's kind of like the flow of functions. Again, with functions, generally when we're naming these functions, um, you want them to be named in all lowercase and usually when we're naming stuff in Python, if there's two or more words, we're gonna use an underspace or an underscore in between them. So I could write this out as say underscore hi. But in a lot of situations though, if I have a function like this where the name is really short, uh, it might just be easier to leave it without an underscore. But why don't we just put an underscore in there just to be uh, super Python official. All right, so now we can actually make these functions a little bit more powerful. And what we can do is we can give them information. So a lot of times when we write a function, we're gonna want to have additional information that gets passed in. And these are called parameters. So a parameter is a piece of information that we give to the function. So over here, I can actually specify that this function needs to receive some parameters. So I can basically say like, hey, if you're gonna call this function, you need to give us some information. You need to give us some parameters. And all I have to do to do that is just type out the name of the parameter that I want to receive. So why don't we allow the um, code calling this function to tell it what name to say hi to. Up here, I can just say name. And basically what this means is, it means whenever I call this say hi function, we have to give it a name. So down here, if I was to call this, I have to include a name in here. So I can say like, Mike. And what we can do now is we can actually access this parameter or this variable inside of our function. So I could come over here and instead of saying hello user, I could say hello name. And basically what this is gonna do is it's just gonna say hello to whatever name got passed in here. So I'm actually gonna copy this and we will do this twice. So I'll say, hello, Mike, hello, Steve. And now when I run this program, you'll see that instead of just saying, hello, user, it's saying hello to whichever name I passed into the function. So that's why this can be really useful, right? We can give the function information and depending on the information we give it, it'll perform its task a little bit differently. I could also um, include more than one parameter. So you can, I mean, technically you could have like as many parameters as you want. So I can put another one in here, we could say age. And now I'm gonna have to pass in an age along with these. So I'm just gonna pass in an age and pass in an age for down here. And I'm just gonna pass in strings. Um, so we can say, hello name, you are age. So I'm passing in two pieces of information. And now when we run this program, it's gonna call the function and it's gonna use both of those pieces of information. So I'll say, hello Mike, you are 35. Hello Steve, you are 70. So essentially we're writing out this one line of code which just prints out like hello to someone. And we're allowing this function to receive two parameters. So the name and the age. And depending on the name and the age, the function is gonna print out hello a little bit differently. And that's kind of the beauty of using functions. So you could pass anything you want into a function. So for example, I could pass in a integer instead of a string for the age. So like I could pass in a number. The only difference is over here, we're gonna to have to convert this into a string, but it's gonna work just the same. So you could pass in, um, strings, numbers, booleans, arrays. You can really pass uh, any type of data into a function and it's gonna work. So you can see here we get the same result. So that's the basics of functions. And as you go through um, with Python, you're gonna you know, be using functions more and more. And generally it's a good idea to break your code up into different functions. So whenever you have like a grouping of code that's designed to perform a specific task, that's usually a good candidate to be put inside of a function. 
Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.